We started, uh, well, my, my grandfather started business in Taos in 1904. They were in the mercantile and the sheep business. And uh, my, my father continued on with uh, the same thing until the 40s, the late 40s when, you know, the uh, synthetics came in and wool wasn't valuable anymore. So uh, my, my dad opened another store. And so we had a couple, two stores on the plaza. And then in, uh, when they went out of the sheep business, my father opened a, a variety store and a hardware store on the plaza called El Mercado. And uh, I bought that from the family. We, we operated that until, uh, well, first of all, TGY came in and hurt us. And then uh, uh, Walmart came in and killed us. So we had to close both the, uh, the variety store. We had to close the hardware store because we bought it through the variety division. And we couldn't uh, buy uh, merchandise anymore. And all of our suppliers were put out of business by uh, by Walmart, all the small suppliers except True Value and uh, Ace Hardware, I think, were the only two left. But uh, we had a great hardware store in the basement. We handled things that a lot of other people didn't have. We fixed pressure cookers. And we sold uh, Coleman fuel, and we took care of the Indians at the Pueblo with all their lamps and Coleman needs. And uh, this went on until uh, uh, we finally had to close it, and then uh, we went like everybody else did on the plaza to uh, gift stores. And so now we're operating the El Mercado as a gift store and the Old Taos Traders as a, as a gift store. And uh, I'll let Barbara continue on if you like. Well, I got this great idea. I wanted to buy this building that my father had built, and it was the first art gallery in Taos. <clears throat> it used to be Tom. Lewis's art gallery. And so I said, oh, Tom, I have to have this. I have to have it. Um, it's only right. My father built it. I, I need it. Of course, he had also built the Wurlitzer home. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get that. <laughs> uh, anyway, he, he built a lot of the artist's homes. And, and he was a wonderful craftsman. And I just wanted something that he had built besides my house. And so, um, he said, well, I'll let you buy it, but you have to make it pay for itself. Well, <coughs> I'll let you buy it was all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> so we opened Casa Benavides with seven rooms, and we were still building on that same property. It had a, there, were, there were a lot of possibilities with that little piece of property. But we tried to buy the one right next door to it that was the um, welfare at the time. And, of course, we didn't have any luck because the state owned it. And um, I can remember it was just awful when they had the alcohol treatment center there. It, this was a bed and breakfast, and we tried to make it really nice. Sometimes the patients would get on the wall and ride it like it was a horse. <laughs> you have no idea what we went through. Anyway, then my parents gave, my mother gave me <clears throat> the family home, which was next door. And so we uh, renovated that. Then we bought what you, was the Victorian house on the corner, the old Miramone house, and the buildings behind it. And one by one, we renovated each one of the buildings. There was a cottage, and there's the, the Victorian house. And we kept the Victorian house as it was, so it's historical. And um, then we bought his family home. So it includes both of our family homes, the first art gallery and house, the Miramon home, which was an old Indian trading post that the Slossers owned. And I kept the signs for everything. Can you imagine that? I don't know how I'm going to use them or where I'm going to put them in my house. Or, you know, but I kept all of the wonderful old signs because we used to have the old Mexico shop and the clothes horse. And when we had four stores on the plaza and we were trying to build the Casa Benavides, we just... We couldn't give them enough time. And so that's one thing that we need to let you know. Before you go into a business, and I did this with Old Mexico Shop, and that's why I had such success with it, is that you have to research, you have to look and see what's needed in the town, and then you have to do your research so you know how to buy and what to buy. So I had a great run for 25 years being able to go to Mexico and Guatemala and go to the people in their houses and buy from them and then pack it and repack that truck and sometimes I took Tom's cattle trailer 
all over the country of Mexico was a great venture. And I went a few times with him and I, with my family too, our children went. And, um, and then I started going with my mother and that was great. We talked nonstop the whole trip. I mean, every time we took a trip, it was talk, 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 talk. And if she'd see a sign written by, I mean, um, on a piece of cardboard, you know, handwritten, ruinous, she'd say, oh, they're excavating over that way. Let's go. So we would go. And it, she would make an adventure out of it. So one thing that you have to do is not only do your research where to go, but you have to have a passion for whatever you're going to sell because passion is the only way that people can trust you you know if you have it in your heart they can sense it i can rent any room over the telephone because they can hear the passion in me you know that i i love what i'm doing i know that i'm a good cook you know i i know that we're providing yeah and and i've learned something is that talking back to me <laughs> But I learned something. Answer the phone with a smile on your face and hear the difference in your voice. That's my little gift that I'm giving you today. <laughs> <laughs> and then we rent out buildings too. So we put our money back into the town. Um, and my, are we supposed to give advice now? Uh, well, we'll have questions. We'll have questions. Okay. Okay. Well, those are my two pieces of advice. <laughs> But actually, you have to be real careful who you hire. It has to be somebody that has a personality and that you can trust because you can't be everywhere at one time. Um, and then you have to be careful who you hire too because have you ever had anyone fire, I mean file for unemployment and you didn't fire them? And they collect unemployment for a year on you? Do you know what that does to your rate? So I've learned. So she came back wanting to work. I said, okay. And she worked one day and said, oh, this is too hard. I'm going to go back on unemployment. So I wrote a scathing letter to the unemployment and said, and told them that you didn't tell me that this girl was filing unemployment on me. And you never questioned it and you gave it to her. Now don't you do it again because I gave him a whole list of things that she had done wrong you know, f with the way she proceeded. Nothing was wrong with her as a person, but she was trying to milk the system. She was cleaning houses on the side for cash. And so she was already making money, but they weren't deducting that from what they were giving her. So really make sure that you hire people that you, well, I thought I could trust her too, but you know. <laughs> Maybe you guys are better at, at, at judging people than I am. But, but the, and, and then just do it with enthusiasm. And it doesn't hurt to work long, hard hours.